So as of late, I've been trying to focus on more unconventional choices in terms of watches that I choose to showcase. And today we're gonna follow that theme, looking at a really cool vintage inspired diver watch, the Rado Captain Cook. Now, depending where you're at in the world, you may be familiar with Rado or you may not be familiar with Rado. When it comes to the United States, they're not necessarily front and center. However, in other parts of the world, like say India, that I've heard as an example, Rado is one of the leading luxury watch brands. The Swiss brand has a history dating back to over 100 years to 1917, being started by two brothers, first as Schlupp and Co., transitioning to the Rado brand name in the 1950s in which the brand sustained quite a good amount of success, creating the original Captain Cook model in 1962, named in honor of the British explorer, Captain James Cook. And shortly after seeing the reissue of the Captain Cook, I was basically just immediately drawn to the watches. So covering them today makes it really easy for me to check it off the bucket list. And thankfully we have two different options in terms of case sizes, a 37 millimeter option and a 42 millimeter option. First, looking at this 42 millimeter option, we have a case size, 42 millimeters, case thickness of 12.1 millimeters, lug to lug of 48.2 millimeters, lug width of 21 millimeters. Crystal, we have a box sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating, water resistance of 200 meters, and within an automatic ETA C07611. And for the smaller case option here, marking the primary differences, we have a case diameter of 37 millimeters, lug to lug of a contained 43 millimeters, thickness of 11.1 .1 millimeters, and water resistance of 100 meters, and a lug width of 19 millimeters. First when looking at these pieces on the wrist, I was actually surprised to find myself actually split on which case diameter I liked more. The 37 millimeter definitely fits a bit better for me, but there was something about it that just made me feel that the watch would be better suited in a larger case format nowadays, despite this case more accurately resembling the original. I think some of this can be contributed to the large markers and bold handset, and knowing that 37 millimeters for a dive watch will look quite small on the majority of men's wrists out there. That considered on my six and a quarter inch wrist, 15.9 centimeters, the 37 millimeter case were compact and were similar to that of my Tudor Submariner in 36 millimeters in its sizing. And I would say that it does wear smaller than what that case size lets on at 37 millimeters. When it comes to the larger case option, this theme of wearing smaller than what the case size indicates is continued with how this watch wears across with its lug to lug of 48.2 millimeters. As compared to other 42 millimeter options and case diameter, I found that this lug to lug is much more compact and I would even say it wears closer to that of a 41 millimeter watch instead. In addition, the 42 millimeter Captain Cook also offers the use of swapping straps and bracelets working in its favor. As with this piece, you get a leather strap and a beads of rice bracelet, as well as a NATO. And of the three, I really loved how the watch just kind of came alive uh, the most on the leather strap, which yes, I know a leather strap on a diver is a bit of an opposed idea to what the watch's intended function is, but just wanted to voice a little bit of opinion here though. But on the back of the leather strap and bracelet, you'll notice quick release pins that make switching between them a breeze, requiring no tools in the process. Yet one of the areas working in these watches favor, and probably is the main point feeding into my thoughts of these divers wearing smaller than they are in terms of their case size, are their slim profiles. As the 42 millimeter measures at 12.1 millimeters thick, roughly a millimeter thinner than that of the Submariner, and the 37 millimeter coming in at 11.1 .1 millimeters thick, being nearly a millimeter thinner than that of the crowd favorite Black Bay 58. Yet it is in this case of the 42 millimeter Captain Cook where the thinness on the wrist is the most felt, as it tends to be a rare combination to have a case that leans large with a slim thickness to this degree. As I have found many large watches fall victim to having to be classified as clunky, as it's usually a safe assumption that a watch tends to vertically blow out as the case diameter expands. But all this considered, do I think it's probably in Rado's best interest to split the difference in the future here with a 39 millimeter option or a 40 millimeter option? Yes, but again, I was actually pleasantly surprised about how well the 42 millimeter watch wore in my time with it. And with the 37 millimeter option, it's actually a great answer for those looking for more vintage proportion pieces, a sentiment I'm seeing echoed time and time again as of late. <laughs> Why 
I was immediately drawn to the Captain Cook was because of their designs. And looking at these two watches on the surface, we have what seems to be pretty similar watches, but totally contrasting uh, just kind of takes on what the original was. To mark a few of the differences in the case style, the 37 millimeter comes with a high polished case, a small compact crown that is non-screw down as an important note here. While the 42 millimeter variant comes with a consistent brush case throughout with a larger extending screw down crown. Moving towards the center of the pieces, the watches feature a 120 click bezel that is very easy to engage with the help of a coined edge and is surprisingly very secure, showing essentially no play whatsoever when engaging. Each of the bezels feature a ceramic bezel insert and for those familiar with Rado as a brand know that ceramic is one of their calling cards. So nice to see this being utilized in the Captain Cook series to assist with up scratch resistance that will come as a result of their use of ceramic. The bezel is slanted inward as it meets the box sapphire crystal, helping to accentuate the dial, drawing the eyes in, which speaking of both share a similar layout in terms of what is displayed. At the center, a handset consisting of a broad hour hand, a long subtly pointed minute hand, and a starkly pointed second hand with a triangular tip, with all of them containing loom. At the three, a step date window outlining a silver date disc with the writing of the date in an eye-catching red. At the six, the writing of Captain Cook in an italicized font. And along the outside of the dial, we have thick bolded loom markers printed on the dial, casting inward from the sloping silver chapter ring. And for a final point of emphasis, the writing of Rado beneath the brand's logo. That actually has kind of a nice trick here. As you may have noticed throughout the video thus far, the anchor symbol at the center actually will rotate when handling the watch and will rest at different positions. A feature that has become a bit of a trademark of the brand and provides some fun in the details. You'll notice again that the 42 millimeter Captain Cook is more modern in its appearance with a matte finished gray dial that turns to almost a milky gray black in the shadows with the absence of any faux loom markers unlike that of the smaller 37 millimeter counterpart. With this one having a tan but unmistakable sunburst style to match the high polished case, as well as having intentionally aged markers. Two different approaches of the design that land favorably for me, with the only real way of choosing which one is more suitable really coming down to the wearer. Now for those not familiar, Rado calls home underneath the swatches umbrella of brands, and with the sometimes challenges that come with being in a large group and really separating from the crowd, when it comes to the swatch group, the upside that is very equal, if not maybe greater in terms of the challenges, is having access to really reliable and solid movements. Flipping the Captain Cook over, we have view of a screw down closed case back featuring an embossed display of stars and seahorses at the center, protecting the automatic ETA C07611 within. The movement stems from the family of 80 hour power reserve movements that occupy other swatch group brands, with this movement reworking that of the ETA 2824 base substantially. The modified movement takes the traditional 28,800 vibrations per hour beat rate and drops it down to 21,600 vibrations per hour or three hertz. In the process, helping to maximize the energy stored by the coiled mainspring to stretch the power reserve significantly to 80 hours. With both of these watches movements running within a few seconds of perfect time a day. To put it simply, they're movements that give you peace of mind so you can enjoy the perks that come with the design on the front of the dial. And even if you do decide to leave the watch, say in a watch box for a few days, given this long power reserve, the watch will not miss a step once you go and grab it again. Now, when thinking of Rado, I see them as a brand that is definitely one of the more compelling offerings and say that $1,000 to $2,000 price tier that they frequently occupy that probably doesn't get as much appreciation as brands like Longines, as well as even Oris when it comes to enthusiasts or watch enthusiast circles. Yet when it comes to the Captain Cook, a model that has surged on as of late giving the brand a bit of a new aspect of its identity as the watch world continues to head into a direction of more casual sports pieces. And despite this world being a busy one in terms of watches on the market, these Captain Cooks certainly have a well-deserved place in it. As along with other brands such as Longines, Oris, and even Zinn, these Captain Cook divers are probably some of the best that you can find for around $2,000. 
And if they are yet to be on your radar, I think it is about time that this changes. So guys, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit the bell icon and subscribe. That's a great way to help out the channel. So I'd really appreciate that. Also, what are your thoughts on the Captain Cook series? I'd love to see comments down below. I think for me personally, in terms of this $1,000 to $2,000 price tier and kind of where they occupy, I think we're probably right there in terms of what Oris is offering with like the Oris Diver 65, uh, Zinn with some of their offering as well as Longines. Uh, however, I think it's like Ball maybe, for example, that doesn't necessarily maybe get mentioned as much as other brands that probably come up a little bit more frequently. Also guys, if you wanna stay up to date with future content, uh, get a better, kind of maybe more personal connection with me on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, definitely follow me on Instagram. Also can stay up to date with giveaways uh, that are gonna be upcoming as well. So great way to kind of stay in touch with what I'm doing. So guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.